Hello and welcome to Atomic Spectra. Light is created on the atomic level when an electron that's in a certain predetermined higher energy state drops down to a lower predetermined energy state. And when that happens, that loss of energy is conserved because a photon is created which has an equivalent energy. Now, those energy states that I was talking about are predetermined because each atom, each different type of element, has a certain discrete number of energy states that electrons can have. And so when electrons fall from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, they will emit a photon with a predictable amount of energy. Now, as it turns out, the wavelength of the photon of light corresponds to its energy and our eyes can pick up a certain range of wavelengths and within that range our eyes interpret wavelength as color and so a certain element will emit a very predictable color when we see it with our with our naked eyes so we have a couple of different elements we're looking at today and the reason the, the way we get them to emit light is we apply a high voltage to the element and it excites those electrons into a higher energy state and they're constantly falling back down to some lower energy state from some higher energy state and it's releasing light. Now we're going to look at hydrogen and helium. Helium has about seven different jumps that releases an, a, a, an, an energy of photon that can be detected with our eyes. So we see about seven or eight different colors from, hide, from uh, helium. Now all those colors get mixed together and it appears to us to be a certain mixed color that helium looks like, it's sort of uh, reddish. Hydrogen, on the other hand, we only see about four colors coming from hydrogen. About four energy drops release energies that correspond to the wavelengths of our visible spectrum. And those mix together and we see the hydrogen as a certain color, sort of sort of bluish, purplish. Now those four colors of hydrogen, if we could see them individually, we would see them as four distinct colors. And we can do that using a prism. We can separate those colors out because as it turns out, the, uh, the amount of uh, the angle at which they're bent by the prism increases with wavelength. So the colors of higher wavelengths are bent more than the colors of lower wavelengths. Therefore, those colors spread out and we can see each individual color instead of all of them coming and striking our eyes at the same time. Now, when we see white light from the sun, it looks white to us because there are so many elements putting out so many different energy levels of photons that they bombard our eyes with so many different colors at once that it mixes together and just looks white. But in this lab, we're going to isolate one of those elements. This is hydrogen. This little tube is evacuated and backfilled with hydrogen gas. Now we're going to put that down into our power supply. It only fits a certain way. Turn it on, and those electrons are now excited into higher energy states as they collapse to lower energy states. Four different wavelengths of light are produced. And those lights mix together probably sort of a magenta color is what you see. Now those four wavelengths of light are predicted by the Balmer formula. The Balmer formula says that one over the wavelength of light emitted in hydrogen is equal to R sub H, which is the Rydberg constant for hydrogen, times one fourth minus one over N squared. Now N is an integer value that sort of corresponds to a drop in energy states. When n is 3, Balmer's formula gives you the corresponding wavelength for the red color emitted by hydrogen. When n is equal to 4, the Balmer formula gives you the corresponding wavelength for the cyan color emitted by hydrogen. When n is equal to 5, you get the wavelength for the blue photon emitted by hydrogen. And when n is equal to 6, you get the wavelength for the violet photon emitted by hydrogen. 
Now helium or some other element will also give you blue and violet photons, but there's slightly different shades of blue and violet. Their wavelengths aren't exactly like the ones produced by hydrogen. Therefore, when we look at certain lights uh, produced by elements, each element has its own special signature. We can easily identify hydrogen by noting its four distinct wavelengths. Now right now I'm looking at hydrogen light and it looks magenta but when I look at it through this diffraction grating I see four different colors and it looks to me as if the colors are out here and a corresponding set over here and the, the reason that is is because this diffraction grating splits the light. Light of the longer wavelengths is, diffract, is refracted more than light of the shorter wavelengths. And so when I look at that, because the longer wavelengths are diffracted more, it's spread out on my eye and it kind of fools my brain into thinking that the light's coming from over here somewhere, when actually it's coming straight through and then spreading out onto my eye. It's kind of like when you look at your feet in the water and you think your legs are short. It's uh, the, the light is the way the light is refracted is tricking your brain into thinking that your feet are somewhere that they're not. So that's the same way here. I actually think that there are lines out here, even though no lines really exist there, it's the way it reflects onto my eye. Let's take a look at this equation. Lambda is equal to d sine theta. And this is sort of a diffraction grading equation because d references the slit distance. Lots of little slits in here and D is the distance between each one of them, or the average distance between each one. And for a fixed constant wavelength, you see that as D gets smaller, sine theta gets larger. So you get a greater dispersion of light for having a smaller value of D. Now, this is good because if I know what D is in my, with my diffraction grading, all I have to do is measure the angle and so I can move this paper around until it strikes, yeah, this paper's right on the blue line now. Now all I have to do is measure this distance and determine what that angle is. Now imagine a triangle going from here to here to there. The angle between that is theta. Now there are corresponding lines over here, so I can get the same theta on this side, take the average of those two angles, and use that as my value of theta. And if I take the average on both sides, it sort of reduces the effects of parallax. So now I'm looking through this diffraction grating, and I'm getting values of theta. So I should be able to calculate the wavelength of light that's making an angle theta with the central line. But I can't. The problem is, I don't know what D is. With a diffraction grating, I can split up the colors coming from my unknown element. Well, I know it's hydrogen, but it could be unknown. It may be a totally new element with its own unique levels and colors of light. But I don't know what the diffraction grading spacing is. The way I find that out is to put it in front of a known wavelength of light. Now this is a helium neon laser, and it produces light of a known wavelength. So I've got it shining on the wall over here, and when I put the diffraction grating in front of it, I get another dot further down the wall. And with this, I can calculate theta. Imagine a line going from the center here, over to the laser, and then out to this next bright dot. The angle between those two lines is theta. And again, there's one on the other side, so there's also theta over there. Let me calculate my average theta, and then using my equation, lambda, the wavelength, is equal to d sine theta with the known wavelength and the average theta produced when I put this diffraction grating in front of it, I can calculate d, the slit distance of the diffraction grating. Now when I take this known d back over and look at the hydrogen light through it, and determine the theta, the average theta of hydrogen and the known value of D. Now I can calculate the four different wavelengths of the hydrogen light. Once I've done that, just to verify that my experiment went correctly, 
I want to compare those four different wavelengths to the four different wavelengths of hydrogen that were predicted by the Balmer formula.